Okay, I want to talk about uh, velocity. We we talked about position, displacement. Now I want to, and we mentioned speed and velocity. The, the difference is that velocity does include a direction. But now I want to talk about how we use graphing to represent motion. We we showed the motion of a car that was going from uh, one position to another in certain in a ten second interval, and we saw the position versus time graph. Now I want to show you the velocity versus time graph. Now velocity is defined as the change in position over the change in time. So it's the rate that the displacement is changing. So right here I have the formula, average velocity is the change in position, delta x change in position over change in time. So it's measured in meters per second. So when we talk about velocity, whenever you hear the term meters per second, right there it should click in your head, okay, that's velocity. It can be positive or negative. In one dimensional motion, that just means it's going one direction or the opposite. So if we have this, the same sequence of motions for this car, we have the 10 seconds of motion, but now if you notice our, our Y coordinate is V in meters per second versus X in meters. So now this is a velocity versus time graph. So if we watch the motion of the car, now it has a different shape graph and it's a series of horizontal lines. Now the vertical lines are just there to connect where the horizontal goes. It's not actually showing the velocity of the car because that would mean that the velocity is changing without any time going by. Now in real world situations, that can't happen. In a graph, it can, uh, but that also tells us, let's go back here and look at this again. That also tells us why this car doesn't seem to move very realistically. It jerks around and goes back and forth and doesn't have time intervals where it really changes speeds and velocities. So notice when the value of the velocity is above zero, it's moving in the forward direction, the positive direction. When the value of velocity is below zero, it's moving in the backward or opposite direction. So the sign of velocity tells us the direction something's moving. The magnitude or amount of velocity tells us the rate that it's changing at, all right? Acceleration is how rapidly the velocity is changing. So we have this formula here, which looks very similar to what I just had on the board for velocity, average velocity, but now this is average acceleration. And this tells us the change in velocity over the same time interval um, is measured in terms of acceleration. So when we talk about acceleration, I'll just write that down. We have delta V over delta T. So that has the units of meters per second per second. Oftentimes, and you'll hear me say meters per second per second, but when we write it, we usually write it meters per second squared. There is no such thing as a square second, so that's why it can be confusing, but um, mathematically, meters per second divided by seconds is the si same as meters per second times one over seconds, so that's why we get meters per second squared. This table has some different um, acceleration values of typical things ranging from well, we see the acceleration of gravity on Earth. That's how fast things accelerate down. In other words, every second that something is falling, it falls 9.81 meters per second faster, okay? Um, if you have to stop your car in an emergency, it stops approximately eight meters per second every second that you're hitting the brake. That's not a crash, that's hitting the brake as hard as you can, all right? Uh, acceleration of gravity on the moon, 1.62. You'll notice that is about six times less than the acceleration of gravity on Earth. That means you experience about one-sixth the gravitational force on the moon that you do on Earth, okay? Acceleration is the one thing about motion that you actually feel. We, we physically can feel acceleration. You cannot feel position. You cannot feel velocity you only feel acceleration. When your car is traveling at 55 miles an hour, you don't feel any different than if you're sitting in your chair at home. 
you might see the world flying by, but you don't feel different. But if you hit the brakes, you feel like you're being pushed forward in the car. Or if you if you hit the accelerator to start at a stop at a stop sign, you feel like you're being pushed backward in the car. Acceleration is something that we feel. So it's the only part of motion that we actually feel. And we'll talk about why that is uh, in a later unit. Okay. So acceleration, just like when we talked about velocity in a position versus time graph, in a velocity versus time graph, acceleration is the slope of the velocity graph. So when we look at the tangent line at t3, uh, time 3, the acceleration is the slope of that. So that tells us right here, the slope has a negative slope. It has a negative change in velocity. That means the velocity is changing in the negative direction. Okay. In this particular case, it's slowing down, but that's not always the case. Uh, so that can be confusing. The between T1 and T2 and between T2 and T3, if we take the, the slope between those two points, that would be what we call the average acceleration. So this, we oftentimes pile up all three graphs. If you notice the position graph is the top one, the velocity graph is the middle one, and the acceleration graph is the bottom one. Now this is a much more, this isn't the same sequence of motions, it's a much more realistic sequence uh, of motions for a car because it has to speed up and slow down. So if we watch this, we see a little bit different look of the position versus time graph versus the velocity versus time graph versus the acceleration versus time graph. We have periods of constant acceleration and then they change to other constant accelerations. When there's an acceleration, the position versus time graph has a curve. And the velocity versus time graph is diagonally oriented. So we have a little bit different look. And that the reason is because it's increasing the distance every second that it moves every second because it's got an acceleration. So acceleration describes the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So if you look at the first second and a half there, you've got a positive slope of the velocity versus time graph. And that means that the position versus time graph has a slope that is positively changing. All right. The second uh, portion of time where the velocity graph is decreasing back to zero at a constant rate, it's got a constant negative acceleration. And the position versus time graph, it's still going forward because, of, because the sign of velocity is positive. So it's still going forward, but it's getting less and less fast. So it's slowing down. And then that third section of time, it's not moving. The velocity is zero. The position stays the same. The acceleration is zero. So when the acceleration is non-zero, you're going to get a diagonal line on the, on the velocity graph because the velocity is changing at that point and the position graph is going to be curved. So we see a much more realistic look. So watch the car and the motion again and you see it speeds up, slows down, stops for a little while, speeds up backwards, slows down, stops for a little while. Okay, so um, it ends up five meters behind where it started the total distance that it traveled is obviously not negative five meters, but the total displacement is negative five meters. The, the velocity at the end of this, because it's standing still, is zero. The acceleration was non-zero up until that instant. All right, so I wanted to talk about that kind of stuff and uh, show you how those graphs relate to each other. This is uh, the confusing part. The acceleration is a much broader term in terms of uh, physics than it is in normal conversation. When we talk acceleration in normal conversation, we mean speeding up. When we talk acceleration in physics, we mean changing velocity, which means, keep in mind, velocity means um, the speed and the direction. So if you're changing your speed, you're accelerating. That means speeding up or slowing down is accelerating. 
If you're changing your direction, you're accelerating. That means turning at a constant speed is accelerating uh, in terms of physics. So anytime your velocity is changing, you are accelerating. This is not like what we are used to, so that can be kind of problematic as we talk. But like it says on the slide here, uh, we try not to use acceleration for increasing speed and deceleration for decreasing speed. We try to use acceleration for all, all circumstances. And you'll see these examples. When the car has a velocity in one direction and acceleration in the same direction, think about what should be happening then. The velocity should be changing in that direction. When it's, uh, so that's part letter A. Letter B, the velocity is in one direction, but the acceleration is in the opposite direction. So what should be happening there? Same thing with letter C, but the velocity is in the opposite direction than A and B, and the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the velocity. So these are four different situations. So I'll be asking you on the follow-up because what is the car doing on some of these situations? All right. That's what I wanted to end with today. So we'll talk about formulas and how we do some mathematical relationships tomorrow. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.